How to Practice Living Meditation by Ven Renz. Meditation may take only a few seconds or 10 or 20 seconds before you carry out daily activities. This incorporates mindfulness into your daily life. In this way, meditation will gradually become an integral part of your daily life. Meditation is not limited to sitting there. Wherever you go, you can always be mindful and then carry out your task. Your mind will become tranquil, focused, open and spacious. You no longer see or look for others' faults because your mind abides in its own state. Whoever you see, you are filled with loving kindness and joy. Loving kindness is a kind of happiness. You wish to bring happiness to all beings. First, you need to be happy. If you are not happy yourself, how can you wish others to be happy? The so-called loving kindness is about cultivating inner peace and joy. By radiating this positive energy, you share your joy with others and their moods also brighten. This is spreading loving kindness. With boundless loving kindness, all beings close to you are influenced by your loving kindness and they too become kind and compassionate. As their loving kindness arises, you mutually influence each other in a state of harmony and joy. There are no barriers in your hearts as everyone is filled with loving kindness. Among fellow practitioners, it's common to maintain loving kindness. When facing sentient beings, our compassion may arise. When we see beings in suffering, Great compassion will spontaneously arise. Among fellow practitioners with common pursuit and understanding on the spiritual path, our loving kindness mutually influences one another. Loving kindness is magnetic and positive. It's different from compassion, which may bring about tears. Loving kindness and mutual influence among fellow practitioners bring about unity. Because when you see a fellow practitioner, your loving kindness arises. Similarly, when they see you, their loving kindness also arises. This brings joy and comfort. When both of you are cultivating loving kindness towards each other, there are no barriers in your hearts. When loving kindness is cultivated, boundless joy arises simultaneously, which is mutual rejoicing. As you both have loving kindness, resonate with each other and feel happy for each other, boundless joy and boundless loving kindness arise. Of course, during this time, we should also cultivate boundless equanimity, because mutual attachment will be a problem. The four boundless qualities should be cultivated daily and it's pretty interesting to integrate them into daily life. In daily life, take a moment to cultivate the four boundless qualities before collaborating with fellow practitioners. This is a form of rest. Work can be rest, while meditation is a practice, a practice in daily life. If you are finding faults in others, you should immediately repent and cultivate loving kindness, joy and equanimity. Equanimity calls for wisdom. Use wisdom to cultivate boundless equanimity. Boundless equanimity is wisdom. Without wisdom, boundless equanimity won't arise. We should eliminate attachment and anger towards sentient beings. This practice calls for wisdom. During meditation, you can cultivate boundless equanimity towards the person you are attached to and meditate on no self. Since there is no self or other, 
attachment naturally dissolves. Therefore, boundless equanimity requires the wisdom of no self. At this point, the boundary between meditation and daily life gradually fades away. The contrast between them will dissolve and you will find yourself increasingly in your natural pure presence without distraction. You live your daily life as if you're in meditation. Life is meditation and meditation is life, so it's called living meditation. Some people claim to practice living meditation. However, this is not easy. It should be noted that this meditation is not in the same category as the Zen tradition or attaining enlightenment. It's about practicing meditation in daily life. Living meditation means integrating meditation into your daily life and living your life as a meditative practice. This explanation is better. When discussing living meditation with others, you can explain it in this manner. This is what living meditation is all about. Don't make it sound too lofty, like attaining enlightenment, which is impossible. Of course, the great Zen masters did practice the highest level of living meditation. However, that is currently beyond our reach. Our living meditation may be at a lower level, but it's very useful and effective. We should practice the living meditation that suits our faculties. With strong ego grasping and low realization, how can we engage in Zen practice or seek enlightenment? That would be deceiving yourself, which is useless. We should practice what is useful in our daily life that is mindfulness. You can frequently integrate mindfulness into your daily life by taking regular breaks. Put your tasks aside and take a break from your life and then meditate to bring up mindfulness before continuing with your tasks. This is living meditation, regularly cultivating mindfulness in our daily life. In daily life, there are many occasions for solitude, such as while commuting, walking, brushing your teeth, using the restroom and washing your face. Even when putting on your makeups, as many women do, you can look into the mirror and meditate. While applying makeup, you can meditate on impurity, multiplicity and impermanence. This is what living meditation is about. It's impossible to attain enlightenment under such circumstances. Truly enlightened beings, like great masters, did practice living meditation at the highest level. However, that is beyond our reach for now. We should practice step by step. The next topic, meditation in action, is probably about this. Let's discuss it tomorrow.